purge of the priest. Just get me. All right, ready? Ready. All right. All right. We're ready. We had a little technical difficulty here, folks, but we're ready now. Um, I'm calling to order the regular meeting of the Common Council of the City of Platteville on Tuesday, February 11th, 2014 at 7 p.m., actually 7.06. And first uh, is roll call. Mike Den. Here. Barbara Doss. Here. Barb Stockhausen. Here. Dick Bonin. Here. Ken Killian. Here. Eileen Nichols. Here. And Patrice Steiner. Here. Next item is consideration of the consent calendar. The following items may be approved on a single motion and vote due to the routine nature of previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you would prefer separate discussion and action. Minutes from the January 28th, 14 regular council meeting, payment of bills, financial report for January 2014, appointments to boards and commissions, there are none this evening, and licenses, one and two year operators licenses which are listed in your packet. Is there a motion? Move to approve the consent mm -hmm. calendar as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Dan? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, in order to do any citizens' comments, observations, or petitions, we would ask that you had filled out the green sheet, and I don't believe that we have any for this evening. We'll go on to reports in your packet. Committee reports, Commission on Aging, Bonin? Uh, none as other than what's in the packet. Historic Preservation Commission, Killian? We are working on the Historic Expo dinner, which is March 7, and the Expo itself is uh, March 8. Also, we're working on the signage, and uh, Joe Carroll has done uh, a putting together of different signage uh, Ordinances, features, or points from different ones, and I see he's done a good job. So that's a uh, report. Ken, do you have any other details on the March 7 event? Like March 7, March 7 is the historic dinner. It'll be at uh, Trinity Episcopal Church. It'll start at uh, 5.30, silent auction, the meal at 6 o'clock, and 7.30 or 7 o'clock will be a presentation by Kent Shrell on the history of Plotville. So well, there'll be information coming out on that. And it's then the expo the next day is uh, from 9 until 4. And that'll be in this building. And then we have a number of uh, presenters. Uh, the evening will be a presentation by uh, one of the authors of a book on uh, taverns in Wisconsin, and we'll do that, I believe, at uh, Badger Bar uh, downtown, 2nd Street. There'll be more coming. Thank you. Plan Commission, Dan? Nothing to add to, add to the minutes. Other reports in your packet include an airport financial report for January of 2014, <coughs> a city attorney itemized statement, Water sewer revenue and expenditures for January 2014 and department progress reports. Any questions or comments on any of those? I had a one or two on the progress. Um, department progress reports? Yes. City attorney, I've, I've asked a question before on some of these. Prevailing wage, is that a continuing, that's for, it's for Brian, is this a continuing thing that uh, It's not going to get resolved. Is it, in, is it in litigation or what's? Yes, it says litigation. It's a matter that's been pending uh, since 2008. Oh, okay. And it seems to be in limbo at this point. Okay, thank you. Anything to add or give on as far as the rental coal litigation? Any changes there? Uh, you were referencing Kallenbach. We had a phone conference today uh, with Dave Pelletier and the city manager. And the there's a 15-month redemption period 
that began to run January 15 of 2013. So if you do the math, we're approaching the end of that 15 month redemption period. And the purpose of the phone call today was to begin the discussion of, of what we're going to do in the order that we're going to do it um, come April 15. We are going to gather some information and um, amongst uh, the city manager and uh, Mr. Pelletier uh, make, get some recommendations to the council um, for information on April 8 and then for council action at the next council meeting in April. Um, those steps will include obtaining some title reports as to the properties that the city can obtain if, if, the, if Mr. Kallenbach doesn't redeem the properties. And to get some, then also to get some direction from the council as to what properties the council wants to obtain deeds for. The uh, last question I have for you is, uh, it says transfer of cemetery lots conferred with Valerie Martin. Is that anything of significance here that we should know about or? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, we'll, we'll, there we'll move on then. Okay. I'm, it was sort of a routine question. Um, okay. Person died, how to get lots into name of person who should have them. Okay. I thought maybe it might be something general. And my last question is for uh, Howard. I'd like to look at uh, the 2000 truck and the 2003 truck. Could I do that on Thursday? Is that possible? Um, we, we can arrange that for you. What time do you close shop? Three o'clock? Uh, normally it's 3.30 unless they're out early uh, plowing snow. Okay, so it's uh, supposed to be I a can... beautiful day of 30 degrees. It's supposed to snow. So I thought I'd come down and take a look. It's supposed to snow for the next three days. I'll give it's... you a call. Very good, thank you. Does anyone else want to see the trucks as well? No, I was just curious as to how an axle falls off a truck. Not sure exactly how that happened either, but uh, it did while hauling snow. Heavy load. Does it, does that mean the wheel fell? <laughs> the, the axle became detached from the body of the truck. Did it, uh, did the bolt come loose or did it rust? That I don't know right off the okay. top of my head. It'd have to be inside. Any other questions on the department progress reports? All right, then we'll go on to information and discussion. The first item is the ordinance to adopt the Wisconsin statute regarding unlawful use of computerized communication systems and harassment. Historically, we've had the um, state statute adopted um, by city ordinance to include a um, ordinance regarding unlawful use of telephone. This is kind of an update on that to include um, or to rather to account for technological advances of how people might harass other folks via email or computer texting or whatnot. During the process of um, drafting the ordinance and uh, whatnot, the city attorney found that we had not adopted uh, the state statute for harassment as well, so that uh, we're going to try and clean up that error. So just a note that you also say that the adoption of these two state statutes will give police officers the ability to cite individuals municipally for these offenses. Correct. That's so we've had the, the right to, because it's state law, we've had the right to uh, or cite them anyway, but this would add one more. Previously, we would have had to go through the district attorney to pursue these uh, violations. But now if we have uh, them adopted by ordinance, we can cite municipally. And, and so will you be bringing forward a forfeiture then, a uh, uh, fine amount? Yes. And, and will that be It'll with... be... There's a general penalty provision that is referenced in 1.10 1 
under the schedule of cash deposits for violations of chapter 41 that would just be adopt violations of these new sections would simply be incorporated in the existing penalty schedule that we have okay okay because i do notice that when i brought up the state statute that it does talk about a forfeiture and i wondered if we were going to see that amount at the same time okay any other questions all right that should be on for action next time then uh, second item is council meeting information due dates Larry uh, during our regular uh, meetings with council leadership um, we discussed the idea of delaying the council packet uh, which would mean the council packet would be distributed on Thursday evenings instead of Wednesday evenings and before we made that change we wanted to get the consensus of the council as to whether you might be open to that idea majority of you really don't mind that would add additional time for staff to prepare materials well and considering I, I suggested the idea I obviously <laughs> am for it um, it seems that when Eileen and I are meeting with Larry to set the agenda that we're rather rushing um, city staff members um, and you know quite frankly I don't ever read the packet before probably Friday night so and, and, and Maybe I'm wrong, but I think when I was first when I first came on the council, I think the packets were delivered on Friday afternoon, and I don't recall why it got switched. But anyway, I thought giving council uh, members an extra 24 hours to get information uh, for the packet would be helpful. My only concern would be that since City Hall is closed Friday, if you did get the packet on Thursday, then it doesn't give you but one day to get questions answered. I mean, there are potentially questions that people wanted. I'm assuming if the, count, if the packet is available for Thursday evening to be uh, delivered, that it can also be posted on the website on Thursday evening. I'm, I haven't been following, but I know that the full packet is posted on the city's website. And so my, my belief would be it could be posted at the same time. That's correct. Hey. That way, if somebody were out of town or something, they would still have the ability to see the full packet. Would that be like Thursday morning or Thursday evening? Well, our intent is to do it as quickly as possible. Okay, because the reason if I say that is I'm echoing Barb's issue there. Thursday morning, at least you could have Thursday to <laughs> come up and ask questions. Thursday, if you if you promise to have a council meeting like tonight's agenda, we will have it to you Thursday morning. Uh, okay. If the agenda is substantial, it's going to take a little longer to do all the photocopying. Um, we could go to an electronic format, in which case you'd get it rather instantly. Oh, well, if true. council members have questions, uh, can't they just email? Yes, the they can always email myself or any department head. Um, we also, uh, when you, if you come, many of us are working on Fridays as well. Um, question for you. Um, will the packets go to the public library and down there by yes Jane's yep on the same time as they always have been which would be Thursday then or Friday be Friday well previously or as of this point we do it on Wednesdays okay. and so the, the public would have plenty of time to review them uh, on the internet at the library or on the display rack uh, downstairs uh, the, the difference is now instead of it being available on Wednesday, it would be available on Thursday. So it would delay by one day. But at a staff level, I think that that would help us make the packet more comprehensive and perhaps get you information that you otherwise uh, might be looking for. And could you tell me how long this has been that way that they've been at the library and on the wall beside Jane? since before I got here. I don't know if any of the staff can answer that more directly. Dwayne, Dwayne has said a long time and okay. I take that with authority. I couldn't have vouched for two years, but I can't go any more than that. So if the packet comes out Thursday, when would the council get it, Thursday evening? Well, it's our intention that the police department would distribute it. The CSOs would go out and distribute it as they do now. 
So whatever time you're getting it on Wednesday, we should be able to get it to you the same time on Thursday. And when would the reviewing, when would the, when would the public get it? The same time the council does. Because we, we produce all the packets at the same time. It's just a delivery to stop at the library and we get it up on the website probably within the hour, hour and a half after it's done. One of the things that came up on our discussion at the agenda setting meeting was that in some instances staff is still trying to get all the information together because they've been asked questions by the council and remember we're talking to them about a week later and they're still trying to get all the information together and would like to have the most comprehensive information they can in the packet for us and sometimes it's almost impossible to do that by well basically I think Tuesday afternoon early Wednesday morning because then the copying has to start so one more day would be helpful and I think in the long run maybe because it would have information in there that maybe has to be emailed out later or you know some other method delivered to us on Friday of something some other information became available so I didn't see that waiting one more day was going to be a detriment to the council I think I see a majority of people that feel similar yeah I have no problem I'll with just that. change it then well I uh, I thought about this uh, I think it makes it more difficult for the council member yeah. because Friday is is not a open the building is not open Friday so I can't see people on Friday what's the matter with Monday Monday is one day before the meeting that's still before the meeting well that's that to me rushing it too much I think you're gonna open yourself up to criticism as far as transparency here by uh, pushing it off one day if anything I'd I'd start this uh, agenda meeting sooner uh, tomorrow you have Wednesday after the council meeting you have a meeting of departments correct with yes. city manager? that goes from 9 and to 11 I I make I'm making the assumption that you talk about agenda items already for the next council meeting in other words, you should, to me, you should be going over what, was tra what has transpired the night before and looking at, well, what needs to be going to the council and what needs to be worked on so you can be working on it already the week of the council meeting. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Killian. In and, fact, and so if, if I may, we're already planning for April's agenda, so you speed up we're the, way ahead of that. The agenda setting, put the agenda setting on Monday, and that way then the people will know what what needs to be worked on right if the council right now I Excuse heard from Patrice that you're meeting Tuesday afternoon that the, Mike and I met Tuesday morning eight o'clock you're losing bus basically a whole day by meeting Tuesday afternoon go ahead you were gonna say something um, if the council meets at a meeting on Tuesday night Wednesday morning we review the council meeting um, we start collecting the information requested on Tuesday night that gives us Wednesday afternoon Thursday and Monday to have all of the information together before Tuesday so it's two and a half days to react to the council's requests that's not enough time it is if you don't mind getting documents perhaps at a little later if they come in later well I think what <laughs> what may happen now is that if we can't study the packet well enough I can foresee more uh, table tabled uh, motions tabled uh, subjects coming up okay does anybody look at the packet before um, Thursday no I do it the weekend so do I I do when it gets to my house I have to ask a lot of questions we can yeah I like to be able to ask questions but Friday it raises locked up well, I think though that the point was made that you can email any of those questions that you have, even on Friday, that in all likelihood most of the department heads are at the city hall and they will respond to emails. So I, I, for me personally, it's not been an issue. If I have a question, I, I feel I get it answered in a timely fashion. Um, I'll give you an example. When we were doing the agenda, and it wouldn't have mattered really, Ken, if we'd done it at 8, at 8 a.m. or 1.30 as we did it, was that there was an item on for action, and because the person that would be doing the presentation for that particular item hadn't yet and got had not yet gotten back to one of the department heads we didn't know whether or not to put it on for action we ended up asking the department head to make a phone call they did call back and at that point we took it off as an action item so I think the reverse could happen where we put things on the 
council packet that quite frankly we don't know for sure if they should be action items or information because the department heads have not yet received responses that they sometimes need to put pertinent information in the packet. So I think I see a consensus from everyone except Ken that Thursday for the council members to receive the packet and also for the public to receive the packet is acceptable. Okay. If this becomes a problem, I think it's very easy to say we're going back to Wednesday. But right now, I would say the consensus is Thursday. Thank you. All right. Um, city attorney contract. Yes, this is every two years we renew our contract with the city attorney. Uh, enclosed in your packet is a copy of the contract. Um, the change that exists from the previous contract to this contract is the increase in fees. Uh, after six years, our city attorney is recommending or, or including a $25 per hour increase uh, in the attorney's fees. Any questions? I have none. Is the $25 based upon um, the going rate? Is it based upon comparables or how'd you come up with a $25 increase? It's been a long time since I had an increase and um, I'm charging $150 an hour uh, for other clients and so I'm raising that up to what I've been charging for other clients for six or eight years. Other questions? That's pretty reasonable. I know, considering what I know. Hmm? Make a motion. Can't. No, it's information. Uh, this is just information and discussion information. tonight. Ken, do you have any other questions? You're looking I had up. another question. I, I asked this uh, before, and it's um, on the list tonight. Also, as far as your uh, your costs, the three hundred fifty dollars you you put in for January, I believe, for travel. Is that correct? Did I read that correctly? And I think you told me at a previous meeting that this was based upon the time spent going to was it Lancaster? Is that correct? I charge travel time for travel to and from Lancaster for court appearances. Okay, so it And then for, there are occasion uh, for council meetings and regular meetings of the police and fire commission. I do not charge travel time. And for special meetings or other things other meetings where I'm required to travel to Platteville, I have the ability to charge travel time for those. So that 350, that number keeps popping up every once in a while. That's Lancaster related. Yes, I mean, okay. I, I'm, I'm guessing that that's Lancaster related um, because I don't recall charging for anything but court time court travel there. I'd have to go back and look at the bill particularly to see what it was for. But it's, you know, it's going to be a reoccurring number because the time to travel from my office to to Lancaster and back doesn't change. Well, the reason I asked the question is I'm looking at number seven. It says modest expenses at the applicable IRS rate. So in one situation, you're, you're, you're charging according to your time spent. In another situation, some of them are charging according to the miles. The contract says I can charge mileage, but I've never charged it. Thank you. All right, any other questions? be on for action next time I believe um, that's all we have for the televised portion of our meeting this evening we are going to go into a work session for a bike trail update from the Platteville Community Arboretum 
Oh, and I'm sorry, we should oh. make a, a motion that we would oh, be going. I think Mike said, sorry. Mean, maybe they want to present in, on TV. Would you like to present to the public? Well, do we have a microphone that we can use? Yes, yeah. we do. They All right. Use this. Uh, you have to come up and use this microphone since our other one gave us all sorts of problems earlier. Just set it up on top here. what I don't All right, if you would give your name and your address, because we do that for our record purposes. Okay, I can do that. My name is Mike Penn, not Mike Den. Finally see who I've been confused with on occasion in town. I'm at 220 Allen Street. So I am here on behalf of the PCA, Platteville Community Arboretum, and uh, to report or to request uh, some funding assistance. So recently, Eileen and Cindy Tang and Jean Weber and Angie Wright went to Madison to talk to the DNR about uh, grant funding for some trail improvements. And we just successfully had a campaign for $100,000, uh, of which 50 was uh, donated by the city as a match, for which we are grateful, for three projects to uh, put a new bridge uh, down by Novus Glass to bypass the steep and largely inaccessible stairs by Fastenal and then to connect the trail along Valley Road. So uh, that being done, uh, they went to the DNR to seek additional funding for further trail improvements to uh, pave and light the entire length of the trail. So this would be all the way from Menards, which is the, ultimately will be the beginning of the connection from the Belmont Trail. Along behind Menards, all the way through uh, town and then all the way out to UW Platteville where it connects at Marquee Drive. And uh, the DNR is apparently receptive of this. I was not at the meeting and those that were cannot be here because they're not available tonight. But um, the DNR was very receptive and has encouraged Platteville to uh, try for those funds, those competitive funds. In order to do so, our $100,000 money that was recently raised can't go into construction if that's to be used as matching funds. So they're recommending that we would delay construction of that portion of the project, apply for this major expansion project, and then use that money as leverage for matching. So our initial estimates are uh, for the entire lighting and paving of approximately $1.2 million and the DNR would provide 50% match, so that would be a 600,000 match from the DNR. We'd have the 100,000 match, which we've already raised, and through discussions with the university and the UWP Foundation and local businesses, it is believed that uh, we could raise or come up with an additional 450,000. So we would then be asking for the city to support $150,000 toward the ultimate project for completion of lighting and paving. Questions? Is there a deadline, Mike, on the uh, May 1st is the deadline for the proposal, submission of the proposal to the DNI. You are intending on doing it this year? That is the intention if we have the support that we need to move forward. But the, 
And the 600000 would be from stewardship monies at DNR, right? The stewardship fund? I, I am sorry, but I'm not certain of that. Okay. I'm not certain of that. Angie uh, Wright is working on the grant. Okay. So, so I'm actually about fifth in the, in the, in the, chain, the, here. the chain here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm available, so that's why I'm here, unfortunately. What would your plans be for making this a multi-use trail? Uh, well, the the plans would be it would multi-use depending on your definition, but the plan KLs, being pedestrian ATVs, biking. ATVs, snowmobiles in the wintertime. Uh, just like Lafayette County, where they produce a lot of income off of this. Just bike trails don't generate a lot of income into the community. They generate some, but nothing. There's been a very good uh, bunch of literature out from Lafayette County and Green County on Monroe on what their all-purpose trails do. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry, but I, again, I'm here representing a larger group, so I, I don't particularly have an answer to that. My understanding is there's concerns uh, if the, pale is being, the trail is being paved that the maintenance costs of the trail will escalate substantially if you have traffic other than bikes and pedestrians. The reason but. I ask that is because a lot of the trails that you, portions of the trail that the bike trail uses right now were snowmobile trails before they became bike trails. Just, just I don't know if you're aware of that, but I'll mention that. Yeah, I am. I, I don't know, Angie, do you want to, Angie, Amy, Sipu, do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> Mike? That, that certainly could be, yeah. I mean, would be something that had to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just for the council's information, the Platteville to Belmont portion of the trail that is being done through the DOT and DNR, that is supposed to be pedestrian and bike only. It is not supposed to be motorized vehicles on that portion of the trail. So it, in my mind, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have our section to be motorized if they can't go from Menards over to Belmont um, everything from Belmont on is right. correct. Uh, and that, Howard, that is true, but yeah. that's that was one of the issues that that they had to work out between the DNR, Lafayette County, and all like that. Really? Is they uh, had to work a, that. Actually, uh, let me go back because uh, when Angie Wright wrote the original grant <coughs> to finish the uh, Belmont to Platteville Trail. I was involved with that, and in fact, it's because of DOT law and the fact that m some of the uh, tr trail that has been built is on DOT uh, ground, oh, okay. I that understand. it cannot be a motorized vehicle. So there are section, <laughs> there are major sections that can't be, and so, I, and and furthermore, I think that we probably have regulations within the city of Platteville city limits about what can be on, what, what can travel where on what kinds of roads. And I think each year, don't we, we grant special permission so that snowmobiles can get to a gas station, I think. But I don't think we have that ability. But I do know that the Platteville to Belmont Trail will only be a pedestrian and bicycle trail because of the, uh, just like the trail that goes south of town, and goes out to County O. That's a paved trail. It was put in by DOT when that road was expanded, 151, and that's only a walking or a bicycling trail because of the DOT um, right away. Can I just add that? Uh, Amy, I'm sorry, if you're gonna speak, you, you need to come to the microphone simply because um, we need to have it recorded so that when the minutes are taken, we can refer to that. Can you introduce yourself, Amy, please? Uh, Amy Sebo, 455 Lutheran Street. I'm also on the PCA board. Um, I would just add to what Mike's saying. We have agreements with the local snowmobile club to use the trail right now, the PCA trail. Um, I don't think that this conversation is fully developed yet is actually what we're talking about right here. And I think that the conversation will just need to continue to figure out if it is good to share that trail once it's paved and who can maintain it, and we just talk through that. That wasn't a whole lot to add, but. Thank you. It's an unanswered question that needs to be answered eventually. Okay, thanks. Other questions? We'll get her figured out. 
I, I have uh, attended the meeting that Mike mentioned in Madison, and um, certainly this was unexpected, but I would say good news that the DNR is encouraging us to look at the entire trail and paving and lighting it at one time. It's an expensive um, project, but if it is possible to obtain half the cost of that project through DNR funding, then I think it's very important that we seriously consider going forward with it. It does mean an investment by the city, and um, I believe park impact fees could be used because it is. That's correct. I've confirmed that park impact fees can be used because it is a new in addition to our existing um, bike trail quality. So if you add above and beyond what you have, it qualifies as an impact fee expense. Not saying that that is, um, you know, the route that we would go as far as using all of our impact fees, but certainly that's something the council should be aware of. Let's have Larry explain the park impact fees so that everybody knows what that is. Okay. Larry, would you explain the park impact fees, how they are collected? I'll certainly make an effort. Um, uh, currently, we have parks in our community that serve a population of X. Every time a new dwelling unit is created, an apartment or a house, um, in addition to their building permit fee, they pay a park impact fee. And the park impact, impact fee is supposed to take into consideration the amount of additional park land or park facility that that dwelling unit would theoretically need. So as additional people move into the community, you need additional parks to serve those people. And this is one way of appropriating the cost of those additional parks to the people who are demanding the use of those parks. Um, and I believe, uh, Joe, do you know what the park fee is? 300 something? $380. $380 is what you, you pay for a single family home or an apartment. So if you build an apartment building, you pay that times each number of apartments. I didn't think that was for uh, properties built in R1 zoning for single family homes. I know it was apartments and all that kind of stuff, yes. rooming houses. I did not realize it was for a single family home also? Yes, that's correct. So if Every they have three unit. bedrooms? You pay the same fee, $384. Because okay, like, if you have an apartment, it's so much per bedroom. No, it's per dwelling unit. Okay, I was under explanation, because I talked to a guy at the um, a rooming house, 11, 11 rooms, 11 bedrooms, and he said he was required to pay 11 different, uh, 11 fees. Okay. Um, I'm not real particular on the rooming houses, but it could be that each unit is rented individually. Maybe that qualifies it as a different unit. They are. Um, you're, we're getting into specifics, and I'm making an effort here, but I, I really don't know those specific details. Well, one area that I would like to see is this will encourage the business owners on a section of that road that need to clean up their backyard or need accessibility built in. I talked to Burial the owner, and he said one of the issues is to clean up the bank so he can have customers come up, but he has problem with that, problem with that right now. Okay. And certainly I, I think there's an increase in biking and walking in our community, and I think that will continue to grow as we're all talking about wellness. So I think uh, it, it's a benefit, I think, to the citizens of Platteville, but it's also a benefit to um, tourism because there are bike groups, bicycling groups that have events during the year and I think this will be a draw to the city of Platteville to have some of those uh, bike trails. And another issue is safety, having them lighted in the evening is a definite plus so that people can safely walk on the trails and they will be um, down off Highway 151 is where the trail goes behind some of the restaurants and things. So. Uh, we don't have a sidewalk on the highway yet, so that's maybe another source of a way for people to get places safely. If, if ever the city were going to consider doing this, now is an appropriate time because we're able to match our funds. And it's not very often that we're able to bring in grant dollars to Platteville, but this is a great opportunity to do just that, to bring money back to our community. And I know that the Platteville Community Arboretum is also writing other grants so they're, they're hoping to find other funding sources 
but obviously having the community itself, businesses, um, and the city and the university also support this is very important. Yes, Mike. Yes, Dick. Um, on the the use for bicycles and the walking trails, I can attest to that because I take care of that from uh, Mineral Street all the way out to, well, in fact, all the way out to Lafayette County uh, mowing. And I, there, it, the, the amount of people and bicycles out there is more and more all the time. And even the schools are taking advantage of it during the school year. There's actually bicycle groups that come down from the high school that ride on it. I don't know what class it is or anything, but I know there's quite a group. I think a lot of people are still even figuring out how extensive the, well, still the trail actually is, and we need maps and such. A lot of people don't even realize that's out there behind Keystone. Yes. But then again, a lot of people do because they're there. Well, I'd also add that it was it was noted by the DNR that uh, rather than try to phase it in where we would perhaps pave it and then come back and light it that they basically said if we're going to fund this for lack of a better term you need to be all in um, because if you're going to come back and try and light it later then you're going to tear up you have to tear up parts that you paved so they say if you're going to do it we want you to do the whole thing at once so this will be a grant application. It's not guaranteed, folks, but basically they're saying that uh, if you apply, you know, we will give it serious consideration. And, and in order to make a stronger grant application, obviously it needs to show local support. That's by May 1st. Uh, I am told that May 1st is the, the date that the proposal is due. Yeah, the grant application, I think, has to be in by May 1st. So. And supposedly we would hear back by late summer, perhaps August or September as to whether or not we were successful. So is the plan, do you think, right now to complete the work in 2014 or was, would it stretch into 2015? Do you have any idea? Uh, regarding the, the previous project or this? <laughs> Either one. The, the, okay, well, if, this, if, we don't, if we don't get notification until September of 2014, we wouldn't even be starting until 2015. Okay. And, and that would be with, with the original three projects as well because we have to hold off on that because it's being used as matching so and at this point because of the timing of everything we were intending to go ahead with the projects that were funded but uh, because there's intention to submit this grant we're now holding off on that because you know we'd have to be getting ready right now to start those other projects and we won't even know until we get to May 1 so yeah, basically September would be too late in the year you know the, to have anybody to do the asphalt and stuff because they're already scheduled for the year yeah well it just to get the design and the, right. the details worked out once you know once you get the check you can't just start going because so it's a basically 2015 maybe 2015 <laughs> okay how, how would you like this handled would you like something that the council can vote on at your next meeting or or you want to talk about it some more? What, what would you direct staff to do? Need more discussion. I think we can do information and discussion one more time. I don't think that that will be detrimental to the grant application. I think we have a little more time. So that would mean that information and discussion the second meeting in February and then action the first meeting in March. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your consideration. <coughs> I do have a uh, half page informational. That's fine if you want to pass that up. If you have any extras, you can leave it over there. And then I also, yeah, with the department heads and also with. I can leave it Yeah, and with Jane too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item on our agenda is to go into closed session, so we would note a motion to do so. Move we go to closed session for state statute 1985, parent one, parent C, considering employment promotion compensation or performance evaluation 
of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction, jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. This would be the city manager employment contract with the return to open session and possible action. There a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second and we'll vote. Dan? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Anyone want a break or you want to go right into closed session? I, I want closed session. Closed session? Close session? All right, we're going to go right into closed session. Oh, we have to wait till everybody clears up. Okay. Yeah, we have to wait until everybody clears out, but then we will go into closed session.